I think the self-centered is I deserve right. my time. Yes. I deserve self-care versus I want to show up as the best yeah. version of myself. Yes. And so I'm going to I'm gonna meet my needs in a healthy way rather than demand anyone in my life to guess what my needs are right. and then be offended that they didn't understand them. Yes. For, it's almost like showing up like a grown-up saying, yeah. okay, the demands of my kids are there. Yeah. That's not their fault. They're not right. overly needy. This is who they are. They are. That's why they got, God gave him a mom. They gave him me. Yeah. But if I look at it as a brace of that, I'm not getting what I deserve. There can almost be a, a selfishness in, yeah. okay, I'll fine. I'll meet your needs rather than listen, I get to steward how I show up. And that's yeah. how you were kind of saying is I want them to experience me. Yeah. And I get to choose how I want to be experienced, not choose their choices or how they talk to me or whatever. I can't always organize that, but I can say, I, I value myself enough yeah. to, to bring my best to the table. Welcome to Havilah's Podcast. I'm your host, Havilah Cunnington, and we are continuing in our series of faith and mental health. Now, last week I shared a little bit about my postpartum depression journey, and hopefully you got a lot out of that. And today, I am not alone. In fact, I have a friend, and I think an expert in this area, in terms <laughs> of how do we connect faith and self-care practical self-care in our lives. And so I've invited my friend Chantel Nelson to be here with me. Her and her husband have been leaders at Bethel Church for many years. She's a mom of three and um, she has a heart to help people uh, in their everyday life, whether it's through a therapy or life coaching, it's all around that. And I'm excited that she's here because I think that her ability to unpack self-care within our culture she understands it. She has three littles. <laughs> she has a, a marriage. She married a younger man, as did I. So we have to keep up with them. And um, so I'm really, I really think you're going to love this. So thank you for being here. I call myself a puma. I'm not a cougar. <laughs> Cougars That's are right. like when there's like 20 years, uh -huh. but I'm a puma because yes. there's like six years. That's right. But I still married him when he was a child, like a <laughs> baby right. man. <laughs> right. I feel like I did. You did a little raising. A yes, little raising. I was raising a couple of kids when I only had one. Yes. At the time. I, yes. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> but he's a man now. He's a full, he is. full blown man. He's so awesome. It just took a couple of kids and a couple of years of marriage to figure it out. But and yes. for us too, as moms. Yes. It's like, wow, I was, I had to grow up. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I know. I'm really glad that you're here. I'm so, so honored to be um, here. I know that you've had this journey of helping people, mm -hmm. diving into their lives. And I don't know, you call it, a therapeutic life coach, but I'm curious, like what has been your journey of helping people in their everyday life to kind of figure this stuff out? Yes. I wish that I just had like a one title. Nobody questions if you're a therapist. They yeah. just, oh yeah, she's a therapist. They know what you do. But I've kind of called myself a therapeutic life coach because I, my journey through schooling was I have a couple years, I was going to open my own restaurant, be a business owner that way. Decided I didn't want to do that. I went into event management, got certified to be an event manager. And then I went and lived in New York for four months and worked in the projects with little kids. And then I wow. realized I wanted to, I remember standing in Harlem and there was Trump Tower. And then there was a project building where there was 10,000 people that lived in one project building. And I felt like that was this God moment at this crossroads where I had to decide, do I want to be on the side of Trump Tower where I've always wanted to be and wearing thousand dollar shoes and working in big business or did I actually want to be on my hands and feet and help people and so I came back to Canada which is where I'm from and I got my bachelor's degree in behavioral sciences which is a mix of psychology and sociology uh -huh. and then I came to BSSM um, I did my three years and then in second year, I decided to get my master's in counseling psychology and I was originally going to go back home and then become a clinical psychologist back in Canada. Yeah. Met my husband. Long story short, we got married <laughs> and then we got pregnant four months in on birth control and um, it kind of just changed the, the trajectory of my professional life as yeah. I was planning it. And so I pu fully put my schooling on the shelf to be a full-time stay-at-home mom, which I never, ever, ever thought I would be. I wanted to be a working mom. I wanted to build an empire and be really, really successful <laughs> and still wear very expensive shoes. Yes. <laughs> um, but I just felt God told me to put it on the shelf. And wow. I kept trying to pull it back down, the professional side of 
kind of going back down the clinical psychologist route. And every time I would pull it back down, because I had to do some upgrading to be at California Standard, because mm -hmm. California is crazy and mm -hmm. it just has a lot of red tape. And every time I would pull it back down, I just felt like it was a no. And so I put it back on the shelf. And when I had my second, I think he was a couple months old, I was in the shower and I heard the Lord say, I want you to teach people how to come alive in every season. Wow. And because I had been kind of thinking about what I would do if I were to start my own business, I kind of, I ran out of the shower and my husband is very like design, marketing, business, entrepreneurial. I was like, babe, I know what I'm going to do. The Lord told me he got the domain, got the website, got it kind of like build me a whole, built me a whole website. And so I got certified as a life coach because long story short, I would have had to jump a lot of hoops mm -hmm. to meet California standard, get my hours. And I had a li two littles at home and I just didn't yeah. want to go that route. And I didn't feel grace on it. And so I became certified as a life coach. And then I, I call myself a therapeutic life coach because I just use a lot of therapeutic. Um, yeah. I, I coach through a therapeutic lens. Yes. I'm not, um, a licensed therapist and I make sure I let people know yeah. that up front, <laughs> but what I do is very therapeutically informed. And I recently started adjunct professing at Simpson, um, awesome. in the counseling psychology program. Yeah. So it kind of informs that more clinical lens and kind of sharpens that edge that I really wanted, but didn't feel like there was grace to go down. So I call myself a therapeutic life coach, but really I just help women specifically get out of survival mode and show mm. up to life as a mom. And you would know this of raising small kids. You kind of just feel like you're in survival mode all the time and you're drowning and you're trying to keep your head above water, which I say there's actually an element of being in survival mode when you have mm. littles. Like there's, I don't, I don't know if there's many people out there with tiny children just really feeling like every area of their life is thriving, but I do think it's possible to thrive even in those really, really intense yeah. seasons. Yeah. There are people, but they have a cook, a nanny. Yes. <laughs> a driver. They are very wealthy. Yeah. Yeah. There yes. are, yeah there's some people out there, but they're not in the churches. Not me. Yes. Not like, no. no. And yes. I, I see you at church and you have your three littles and I'm like, girl. Just head I down. Get, always. Oh, I get it. It's a blur. Yeah. It's a blur. And very I just blurry. think, you know what? I may not be able to document this, but I, I lived it. Yeah. So, and that's really the only person that's going to really care. Oh no. I remember your early, early podcasts where you would just say, you're just in between the washer and the dryer all the that's time. It. That's what we do. That's it. Haul and wipe. Yep. All we do is haul and wipe. I feel that Butts, way all the time. Counters, everything. Yeah. 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 Everything. Exactly. Um, I love that. And again, I think people have to understand that because we live in California and because of our environment, we draw a lot of professionals, people that were experts in their field in other areas. But when they land in California, it complicates it because there's yes. a, a unique journey in California when it comes to even the medical field, psychology, you know, yes. uh, all of that. So a lot of times in any other area, you would be a professional. But again, California is also very quick to legally take action yes. if you were to misrepresent yourself. So yes. I can understand the, yeah. the that you're editing that. And yes. I love that. But I love the therapeutic lens. And I feel like that's my side hustle. I love yes. anything that it comes to... Um, you know, the study of the brain and behavior. Mm -hmm. And I'm way more prone to watch or listen to something on that yeah. than I even am at times the things I should be. Yes. Because I just, I love it. It's I love so how, true. yeah, I loved the diagnosing part of it. So I'm curious, we're going to talk a little bit about faith and practical self-care. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I want to start with, did you, I mean, obviously you had three kids in how many years? Was it? Not as much as you. Well, it's pretty it's close though. Three kids Four, in five years? five years. Yeah. Yeah. And newly married. Yes. So you did that as well. Yes. And so in your own life, did you find yourself trying to figure out how to do this? Even with all your head knowledge? Yes. It's def very different knowing what you're supposed to do. And everybody, I think self-care is a very over preached on thing. And it's people kind of think of it as just taking baths and yes, wearing we do. facial Lighting masks. Candles. Yes, we do. So let me ask you, what would you define practical self-care as? Because again, there's this weird little faith culture that yeah. goes, self is dead. We should yes. die to self oh, and yeah. we should elevate to the spirit. Yes. But we live within a container that has to be taken care of. Yes. So I'm curious, do you, how would you define that for someone that's listening? Yeah. I think self-care feels selfish and I work with a lot of 
women who kind of have to unwire that belief of, I mean, I grew up very much in that mindset of you die to self, you are a sinner saved by grace, you are nothing, God is everything, which is true. Um, but it doesn't mean that we are completely out of the picture. Otherwise God wouldn't have put us in a very human body with a very human soul. And so I, I mean, it's like that picture, you've probably heard it a lot where when you're on an airplane, they're always saying, make sure you put your mask on first. If this thing goes down, everything inside of you is going to want to help the person next to you, especially as a mom with kids, like everything inside of me would want to put their mask on first, but they always say you put your mask on first. And it's because I actually can't give to them in the way that they need if I'm not breathing first. And I mean, even the scripture do unto others as you would, as you would do unto yourself. Like we actually have to, we have to, do un, like do with ourselves and yeah. be healed and whole and honest with ourselves about what we need. Otherwise, we're just giving the people in our life just the overflow of what we're giving to ourselves. And for many of us, that's not a lot. Like as a mom with three kids, I don't have a lot of extra energy and capacity. So if I'm putting everybody else's needs before my own, then they're getting the T-Rex version of me, as my yeah. husband calls it. The snappy, <laughs> impatient, frustrated. And this is why I wake up so early and you would know this too. Mm -hmm. Like getting up super, I get up at 4.30 and sometimes earlier because I know that I need to fill up my cup so that when my kids walk out of there, room that they're getting a good version of me. I always say like, I wake up at like a 20%, just like everybody else, even though I'm a morning person. And my goal in that early morning is to fill up my cup as much as possible and not to a hundred. Cause I don't know if I could ever right. fill that up, right? but just enough so that when they get of when they receive from me that it's from the overflow and it's like Proverbs 4.23, pay attention to the welfare of your mm. innermost being because everything in your life is going to flow out of that. And so self-care is so much more than just a candle and a face mask. It's we're triune beings, we're body, we're soul, mm. and we're spirit. And I actually have an acronym that I use with clients all the time that is self-care and yeah. it's sleep. I have to remember this. Sleep, exercise, limits. So boundaries in our life. Sleep, exercise, limits, fun, um, and then connection aspirations, which is going after things that make us come alive that yep. make us feel like we're doing more than just kind of surviving and then rest, which is different than sleep, which is the re restoring of our souls and doing things that we love and then eating well. And I just think it kind of hits Beautiful. all of the little points on what we actually need to take care of with ourselves, so that when we're meeting the needs of other people, because that's what we ultimately want to do is want to meet other people's needs and not just be selfish. When I've checked off those boxes, I'm, I'm an endless tank of wanting to meet other people's needs and wanting to be there for other people. Yeah. So let's go back to the morning thing because mm -hmm. it's funny. I did that. Like you said, you for, were three for a decade. I, I was a 3 a.m. Yes. I was, but again, I was going to bed at 7 30 or 8. Yes. I mean, when the kids went to bed now, I don't get up early and it, it drives me crazy because I would love to, but the teens have swapped, yeah. you know, now they're oh, yeah, nocturnal and so I have to keep other people oh, alive. Yeah. But there is something really critical about those morning moments. Yeah. And so I'm curious when you get up, what do you do? Like, are you, are you an introvert? Are you yes. An introvert? Okay. 100%. So you're an introvert. Yeah. So when you get up, how do you set up that? Do you get two hours, an hour? How much time before the kids get up? Usually it's like an hour and a half to two hours. I know. Isn't it luxurious? Yeah. I know. It's so, so luxurious. Nice. I love it. And it's the more like, kids I have, the earlier I get up. I'm like, <laughs> this is why we're done having kids. Because uh -huh. I'm like, I can't, uh -huh. I, eventually I just won't sleep because <laughs> I need a certain amount of hours per kid. And yes. so we're done at three. I'm tracking. I'm <laughs> trying. So when you get up, what do you like to do? Is I it mean, different or is there a routine? I think people think when you're a morning person, they think that like birds are singing and I'm just like alive in the home. I'm, I, I look like I got hit by a truck. <laughs> I feel like I got hit by a truck. And I like to say that because I'm like, people just think automatically assume because I'm a morning person that everything is easy, but it's a choice every single day. Am mm -hmm. I going to get up or am I going to just kind of keep sleeping? And the more that I've done it over the years, it's not even an option to keep sleeping unless I had a hard night with a kid or something. Um, but usually I try and hit all three body, soul, spirit. And that's mm. kind of how I kind of create a routine and in different seasons that looks different. And when I'm postpartum, it's just moving. My body might look like just getting outside or yep. just going for a walk later on in the day. Um, but I always try and hit those three. And so I'm always doing a workout. Um, I'm always doing some kind of like 
something that's filling up my cup, my soul. And so yeah. usually it's listening to a neuroscience podcast because yes, yes. I just love and it really just kind of gets my brain thinking. And then my spirit is just having some quiet time reading my Bible. But I also do all of my chores in the early morning. So all my laundry, all the cleaning, all you the do. washing of the floors. Because then I don't have to do it in the day. Yes. And then it's just done. Check for the day. And I'm not getting doing interrupted it. while mm-hmm. I'm doing it. Kids aren't like rolling all over my like freshly <laughs> folded laundry. It's done. And so then that way it's like once my kids wake up, then I can be there with yeah. them because I've taken care of the things I need to take care of. Yeah, it's a big deal. Do you go to bed early? Yes. <laughs> yes. The earlier and earlier. Sometimes I'm in bed by 7.15. I, I, I was too. And it's my husband, scary. I would say, I'll see you in a couple know, hours. So sorry. Because he would not go to bed I at know. 7. And he he was a night owl. Yes. And so I would just say, I'm so sorry, I but I, I can't. I'll wake you up with a treat in the morning. Is yes. What I say. It's me. All right. I'll bring <laughs> coffee to you. Right? Yeah. That was us. And we used to end up having these moments where we would have these date nights and he was a night owl and I was exhausted oh, yes. and I would feel so guilty. We'd I spend know. all this money and I'd go to like watch a movie and I'd sleep through the whole thing. No, I know. And I finally said, I can't do this anymore. Like if you want to have time with me real time, or if you want to have sex with me, yes. <laughs> like and oh, yeah. me not be like delirious, you got to meet me in the afternoon. Like yes. it's got to be a lunchtime or a morning. Our date nights are at five. Yeah, it's, we're it's with the old people early. at the restaurant. Yeah, exactly. It's all the old and it's people happy in hour yes. pricing. Yes, exactly. It's, yeah, everyone's happy. It, yes. I agree with you. My it's, hack is you have sex in the morning before the kids wake up. Yes, and then you don't have to have it late at night after date <laughs> That's night. Right, and you've been awake for an hour and a half. Yes. you've been prepping. You're yep. caffeinated. I'm good. You're doing I'm ready. Great. I'm on yeah, fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is funny how I think a lot of the ideals got in the way of really what was really great. Yeah. And I had to get out of that. Yes. Like the night seems like it should be that yes. moment or that time. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about how you, I loved those different elements of how you kind of structure. What do you find that people have um, the greatest battle when it comes to self-care? Like you said, is being selfish. Yeah. What's that small step that they can begin to take or what what's that internal narrative they have to tell themselves yeah. to start to do that well? I think finding your why, which is a Simon Ooh, yeah, Sinek thing. About this. Um, but you have to know what it is that you're fighting for. Nobody mm-hmm. wants to just wake up at 4.30 just because. And I don't, I would never wake up at 4.30 in the morning just because. I have to, inv- I had to picture why would I actually put myself through this amount of suffering to wake up this <laughs> early, be this exhausted. And, but it was because I want to be able to give my best for my kids in this season that I'm in. And because for a while I would only wake up Monday to Friday early and then I would let myself sleep in Mm -hmm. on Saturday, Sundays. And Saturday, Sundays were my worst days because I was waking up immediately to them hovering over me in my bed and immediately needing breakfast, immediately needing their butts wiped. And then I'm getting my day started already meeting people's needs while I'm at a 20 percent. And so making that switch for me was my why is when they wake up in the mornings, I want to be able to be my best self for them. Not always. And they're not always going to get the best version of me, but everything that I do in the day, I want to be able to show up with energy, feeling like my cup got filled. And I think I'm, because I'm an introvert, I need a little bit more time to fill that. But when I have to be up and immediately on for everybody else, I, I, they're not going to get the best of me. And so envisioning that, finding my why, this is why I'm waking up early. This is why I'm going to bed early is because I have this picture in front of me of I want to be the most energetic and the most present version of myself. And I can't do that if I'm waking up to needs. Yes. It waking up, it's so abrasive. So abrasive. And it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an yes. extrovert, it felt hostile. Oh, like absolutely. I mean, when the kids sitting over you and they're po- poking yes. at you, you feel like you're being there's tortured. There's a snack put there, on your face. Uh, yeah, there is a tortured part or you hear them in the kitchen rum, and you're thinking, please yes. keep them. And you're nudging each other. It's your turn. Get up, get up. <laughs> I, I just remember feeling like there was an abrasiveness to it. And yes. so I agree with you. It was me being able to steward that rather than just letting life hit me because yeah. if you're a working mom or you are just a woman in, in life, things are abrasive. It's yeah. like, if you don't rise up to meet the day, it will yes. meet you and yes. it'll probably slap you. Oh, yeah. That's how it's going to start. And punch you. So it'll punch call you. you poopy so pants. I love that. Exactly. <laughs> I love that idea that you go, okay, this is important. You value yourself and you value the feeling you want your kids to have about you, which yeah. is interesting. I think that's really profound yeah. that you steward it in that way. Yeah. And I think it can, it can pendulum swing to the other side where it's like, 
I'm the most important. I have to take care of myself. It's all about me, 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 me. I'm like, no, it's not that. There's been seasons, especially like early motherhood, postpartum, or just hard seasons where it's like, we're all just doing the best that we can. I'm not waking up early. I'm yeah. just, I'm, this is what I'm giving to my life. I can't. And even when Z my little was a baby, because I've done this for so long. Like I know how to take care of myself. I'm really good at showing up for myself and getting my needs met. But when I had the introduction of a third and then she's up all night, my other kids are up because they're sick or whatever. And it was realizing I can actually still be present even though all of my needs are not being taken mm -hmm. care of. Because I think we can find ourselves in that camp way too mm -hmm. much. Like I need to take care of my needs. I need, I'm first, I have to, and it can almost just feel like it actually goes against the season that you're in. And so there's a grace in different seasons. And there was when I had my third, where it was like, my needs actually aren't getting taken care of that well. I'm not working out. I'm not feeding myself very well, but there's a grace to be here. Yeah. And it's not going to be this way forever. Every season changes and it requires a different a different pull from us. And so it's not just like me hiding in my self-care corner, trying to get all my needs met. There's just grace to be in different seasons. And how do you know if someone's listening to this or watching, how do they know if they're stuck in the self-needs corner? How, what would, what would be signs that they would find? I think you feel frustrated or angry or bitter about people needing you and you not getting your time or me not get and I've been here before like my kids <laughs> with daylight every daylight savings time it's like they're up at 5 a.m and I'm harboring frustration and anger because I'm for, I didn't get my workout in and I'm all grumpy and I'm like oh no this it's not actually always about me I'm like they're three years old. They don't know that the time changed. I tried to explain to my son like what daylight savings time was. And I was like, does that make sense? He was like, no, nope. it didn't make sense at all. <laughs> so I'm like, if I'm feeling like I'm like Gollum trying to protect this self-care thing and I'm not actually being present in my life and I'm not actually engaging with just the ebb and flow of different seasons and that I feel like that's when I've gone so far into myself to where my self-care has become selfish yeah I think there has to be a natural ebb and flow on a like it even on a daily basis like Saturday night, my daughter was up with a fever. And so Sunday morning, I wasn't waking up. I did wake up to the snack on my face. Yes. And <laughs> it was like, all right, this is the kind of day that it's going to be, but I'm not going to let it rob my peace. I'm not going to let it rob my joy. I'm going to show up in a different way. I'm going to, I think even to being able to plan for yourself, okay, I'm not, I didn't get to get my workout in or my quiet time today, but tonight I'm going to go to bed early mm -hmm. so that I can wake up early. Just even having that kind of joy set before me of, all right, I, it's not going to go perfect every time, but this is how I'm going to kind of make up for that. I remember that, that giddy of like, you know, I'm going to go to bed as early yes, as possible so I can have feeling. a loan. When yeah. I get in bed and the sun is still very much in the sky, <laughs> I feel like I have won. <laughs> no. I have it's won. So true. <laughs> you know, I think that's a really good point, which is I think the self-centered is I deserve right. my time. Yes. I deserve self-care versus I want to show up as the best yeah. version of myself. Yes. And so I'm going to I'm going to meet my needs in a healthy way rather than demand anyone in my life to guess what my needs are right. and then be offended that they didn't understand them. Yes. For, it's almost like showing up like a grown-up saying, yeah. "Okay, the demands of my kids are there." Yeah. That's not their fault. They're not right. overly needy. This is who they are. They that's why they got, God gave them a mom. They gave them me. Yeah. But if I look at it as a brace of that, I'm not getting what I deserve. There can almost be a, a selfishness in, yeah. okay, I'll fine. I'll meet your needs rather than listen, I get to steward how I show up. And that's yeah. how you were kind of saying is I want them to experience me. Yeah. And I get to choose how I want to be experienced, not choose their choices or how they talk to me or whatever. I can't always organize that, but I can say, I, I value myself enough yeah. to, to bring my best to the table. It's just yeah. very different yeah. than I got to get my time. I love that, yeah. And there is a very different attitude around it. Yes. And I've seen both happen. Yes. And there's something in me that goes, yeah, that sounds good when you say it, but underlyingly, right. it feels as if you deserve this right. and anyone who keeps you from it right. is out to get you. Right. And I just think if you're at that point, there needs to be some editing in how yes. you're viewing yeah, that. Yeah, I love that. Because it ends up being really intense. So mm -hmm. let me ask you, how as a Christian community, how have we overlooked some of our self-care? And how have we, you know, what have we done wrong in some of this? The, the, the world seems to get it really well at certain points. Yeah. And in the Christian world, we haven't. So what are you seeing with different women and men that you're around that they're getting right or they're getting wrong? Yeah. And their faith is kind of hurting or helping it. Yeah. I think 
I see a lot of very burnt out moms, especially, and almost this like fear of taking care of themselves because Mm. it goes, it's so goes against what they were taught when it comes to who we are as Christians. And again, it's so because we are sinners saved by grace, but I think growing up in an era where that was the focus that we are just a Mm -hmm. sinner. It is not about us. We just kind of keep pushing and working for the gospel and for the church. And we don't, we neglect all of our needs. And I think I saw a lot of that growing up, but you see all these leaders and they're not happy. Mm -hmm. Like they've given everything Mm -hmm. body, soul, spirit for what they're doing, but they, their marriages Mm -hmm. are suffering. Their kids aren't getting a lot of them. And so that doesn't really give us a good picture of what it looks like to be, to lay our life down. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, I don't, I don't find that. I mean, I remember even looking at like just faith leaders in my community at that time and being like, I don't want my life to look like any of yours. And I think we took it, I think a lot of times in culture, we're just always pendulum swinging back and forth. And so there's that you have no needs. We don't take care of our needs. And then it kind of pendulum swings to, you just need to take care of yourself. It's all like kind of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That thing that you were just talking about. Um, but I think just practically, we we have to take care of ourselves. If our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and I love that, like I mentioned that Proverbs 4.23, pay attention to the welfare of your innermost mm-hmm. being. Like every, it literally says it in scripture, everything in our life flows from what's going on inside of us. That's right. So if we're exhausted, if we're bitter, if we're frustrated because we're not getting time to ourselves or we're not having connection with our husbands or we're just doing too much, all of that is going to flow out of us. And the people that we're leading, whether it's our kids, whether it's our communities, whether it's a a church, they're going to feel the overflow of the wellspring of our life. And so we have to, like, it's literally scriptural. We have to pay attention to the, to the well-being, to the, to the welfare of our innermost being. Yeah. I love that. You're exactly right. It's the filter. Yeah. Everything comes from it. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm curious, you have multiple roles. So you yes. obviously are teaching at a college locally. You're a mom, you're a wife, mm-hmm. you're a leader. You also teach at our sons. They, we have a very large youth group and I, I've had, my kids have said you, they, they love it when you and your husband teach, but I'm curious, how do you manage your different roles along with self-care? Because I know that means that you get interrupted. Like one yes. day you got to get up and get ready and act like a, an adult. Yep. And the next day your mom and the next day you're with youth. Yes. So how do you actually balance all of that in your life and have self-care yeah. and, and take care of yourself? We, my husband had my kids for six days last <laughs> month when I went home. Um, and he was like, I used to respect you. And now you have moved from respect to reverence. Yeah, He's like, shut, now right? I revere you because <laughs> it's so intense and it's not just like mm-hmm. he gets to go to work and he doesn't really think about mm-hmm. what's happening at home. But I'm like, there's a birthday party. I need to pick up sesame oil from here and I need to do all these <laughs> things and I have to get back to that client and I have to prepare this lecture. It's our, the, our, the woman's ability to kind of do all of these things at once is insane. Isn't it intense? It's, it's so, so intense. intense and nobody understands it. I used to sit at tables with men and I respected them. I've, they have all my respect, but I would think you get to go home to a dinner yes. and a quiet one. And I have to go home and change two diapers, yes. clean out this. We have no laundry. I've got to make dinner. My night is just getting started. Oh, yeah. And you have to, and it was very, um, it felt like they said hats, but you would yeah. feel like you'd put on a hat and then you had to get your brain into that space. And as a woman, it takes a minute yes. to do that, but you... I think we keep everybody alive. Oh, yeah. So there's something about us that's like, dad's going to like, they're going to have fun. Yeah. And they're going to have a lot of activities. But moms are like, I, it took me nine months we to make this person. We hold it all person. together. Yes. Yeah. Like, I think we know the sacrifice of what it took to make this person. Yeah. But it is very interesting. I, I don't think, I did not understand as a woman, because I was a, a single woman, a working woman for many years. Yeah. And then being a mom right away, like you. Yeah. And a working woman, it was like, I had no idea the internal switch I had to give myself, which was um, even I had self-care look like sitting in the driveway for a minute and and just getting getting my heart in that space and my head, or I was going to come in and feel almost like, not betrayed, but just like, I'm the hardest working person in the world. And I had this kind of part of me that was like, I, you know, you guys have more needs. I just met a bunch of people's needs. So for me personally, 
I had these kind of routines that allowed me to like take a deep breath in the middle of chaos. Yes. So do you have breaths that you take in the middle of chaos? And this is what I was telling my husband when I was gone. Like you can't just expect to, at the end of the day, recover from the day and that you're going to be good. good. Wait, explain that again. (laughs) You can't because he would kind of have these set aside gaps of time where someone come watch the kids and then he would have time by himself. And it was not enough to kind of refill (laughs) him from the chaos that ensued the 10 hours before. And like by the time he got to that space, he was like paralyzed and frozen. Like I'm so spent. I don't even know what to do with my time. You get the anxiety if I only have two or three hours and and I better like- You spend the first hour having anxiety about it. You do. Because you're thinking, I want to read that book and then I have to do that error and I have to, and then I would just waste an hour. you do nothing. Yes. Yes, You do nothing. So I told him like, you have to have constant pockets throughout the day Mm. where you're coming back home to yourself. Because the part of like- when you have kids like and the meltdowns and the yelling and the fighting, like you're just leaving yourself all over the place. And we joke that like our self-care is that time between strapping your one kid in the car seat and then walking around to <laughs> yeah. your side. And you just walk really slowly. Breath. You take deep breaths so that when you get in the car, you don't like lose it on them. You do you I remember Ben and I would literally sit and hug and kind of like make out for a minute in between the walk. <laughs> it was like and we go, and we I need to do like, that. It's so peaceful. We like love our lives. And we would like <laughs> kind of sarcastically like look at, and you're screaming in the car, but you're just in this moment, this, this naive pocket. I need just, to, I need to adopt just, And we would be hysterical. We would just be hysterical because you knew what you were getting into. Yes. And the car was just oh, filled yeah. with screaming Everyone's and throwing and throwing snacks. Uh huh. Yes. And so it was just this like naive pocket. Of yes. Just, this is, isn't this great? We, these are our children. It's so peaceful and quiet. I used to do that and, with my husband. If he did that, I'd be like, don't touch yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I get that too. But I think, I think that you said it, having those like it's all throughout the day coming back to myself recentering taking deep breaths and sometimes self-care looks like everybody get in the car we're Mm -hmm. going to a park Mm -hmm. you guys are going to run around and I'm just going to kind of come back to myself and I think I've I think I've just kind of so naturally done it over so many years that now it just doesn't feel like I'm oh now I'm taking care of myself Mm -hmm. and doing these robotic things now it's like you kind of just go through this roller coaster every day, but rather than having all these high highs and these low lows, you're just learning how to come back down to this place of homeostasis. And this is how our nervous systems work anyways. You kind of go into fight or flight and then you come back down or you go into kind of like that more shutdown place and you come back up. And that's mental health, kind of maintaining that equilibrium because mental health isn't just being flatlined. We're happy. We're all good all the time. Like that's psychosis. Yeah, it is. (laughs) But like being able to actually move with an ebb and flow with the high highs and the and the lows and not getting stuck there. Is that a internal narrative that helps? Is there a habit in which you form a, a narrative that you always return to? How did you figure that out? I think a lot of it's really body based. And I think Ooh, it can sound really somatic and woo woo, but I think a lot I think cognitive behavioral therapy is a very the gold standard of your thoughts and your feelings and your behaviors, which is all well and good. But you try telling a kid to, what are you thinking right now when they're in full blown meltdown mm-hmm. mode? And so it's I mean, I teach my four year old specifically, we've had a lot of dysregulation. He's had a lot of body trauma in his early years and a lot mm-hmm. of hospital visits. And so there's been a lot of dysregulation and those narratives don't help him in that moment. And Mm -hmm. so just teaching him how to come back to his body, how to kind of take deep breaths, how to calm down, how to, and and it, it almost takes a lot of creativity for me because I am very, okay, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? Let's talk about it. But teaching him how to actually get back in his body has been really helpful because then we can talk after. And it's like us when we get super triggered and we're really dysregulated. Yeah me, what am I believing right now? What is the lie that I'm believing isn't helping me? I need to come back to myself. And so a lot of it's been really body-based and body-based meaning I just get outside. I take deep breaths. We go for a drive and I'm, I don't have the luxury of just leaving all my kids at home and going to do this. Like they come with me or I just Mm -hmm. lay on the ground and I just take deep breaths and teach and they laugh and they're climbing all over me and smacking me in the face. And, but it's, it's how I come back to myself and then I can think, okay, why did I get triggered? That's why did that really frustrate good. me so much that I kind of snapped and lost it a little bit is just coming back into my body first. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, I would definitely agree with that. And I think you have to couple it with, okay, what what was the narrative there? Because then if it's just you get back in your body, but you don't actually figure out 
where you got triggered. So then it just kind of keeps happening again and again and processing why do I feel so powerless in this certain area? Why does this one child of mine continually yes. kind of dysregulate me and really, really frustrate me? And so that I can process it. But after I'm out of that space of being triggered, I think we are, we're trying to, I think the cognitive behavioral is when you're in the middle of a trigger, you're trying to ask, what am I believing? What am I thinking? But you don't actually have access you don't. to that part of your brain you're in, in that moment. Flight. You're in fight or flight. Yeah. I really love that. I think it's that idea of going back. Yeah. For me, it is. It's the going back. Why was I triggered rather yes. than, because in the middle, I'll feel shame or yes. I'll feel rage or I'll feel, you know, or even dismissive. Yeah. And then later go, I, you know what? I, or like you said, one of the people in my home is triggering. Every time I'm with them, I feel yeah. a little irritated. And usually it's about something that happened with somebody else. Yeah. Um, usually it's a reflection of my parenting yeah. or something that I didn't do well. And then I see it show up in that kid's life. And I'm yeah. thinking, I'm going to work it out of them. But not knowing that, but using my own. So I really love that. So yeah. those moments of getting back. For me, I even had like a favorite, like my iced tea. And I would fill it up. And then if I felt like I was kind of losing, I would just go make my iced tea and hold. And just these little like yes. symbolic things. You had the story about the chicken. You would go make the chicken. And yes. when, actually, when you shared that years and years and years ago, I was, go I was in like a really hard just season of my life where I just constantly felt low and depressed. Mm -hmm. And I had this, I created this routine on my Alexa where I would say, Alexa, I'm having a bad day. And I programmed her to, she would tell me like a fun fact happening in the world or something heartfelt that somebody did in the world. And then she would play this one specific worship album. And then when that worship album turned on, I would grab my cleaning spray and just wipe the counters. Wow. And it was this like reset where it like realigned my body to the present moment, which is my counters, my life in front of me. So when I was spiraling and kind of just like, you know, when you just get in a spiral and you like can't get out, mm -hmm. it wasn't coaching myself on why are you triggered? Why do you feel so low? What do you need to tell yourself? It was getting back in my body and coming back into the real time. And so that was super helpful. And I learned that from you with yeah. the chicken, just having this that. thing. And I would do it all the time in that season. And it just helped me come back to real life. And I would clean the counters and I would start cooking dinner. And all of a sudden I'd be back in my body. And then I could actually, like you said, go back. And what happened? Why did I get so low? Why yep. did I feel so hopeless today? I love that. I have a certain candle I light. Yes. That kind of like, once I light the candle, it makes me feel like hey, it's yes. dinner time. I can yep. relax. Um, we also have something we've done forever, which is Alexa comes on at 7 a.m. with yes. worship music. Yeah, I love that. Rain or shine, it's hysterical. We, You know, you'll hear there's worship going on, but it's something about that, that if in the middle of a crazy morning, the worship comes on and it just brings you right yeah. back to, okay, I'm here again. Sometimes yeah. I resent it I like <laughs> like, in the middle up. of like, ah, yes. you know, it's like the worship's going and I'm like, shut up, you know? <laughs> Um, but I, I love that. I love that idea. So for just to kind of close out this idea, cause there's so many things you've hit on and I really love it. The idea of self-care, the idea of not being a self-centered corner, but yeah. actually being prepared to be the best yeah. you can be for your people. Um, I love that idea that you can't coach yourself in the middle of that chaotic moment or the triggering moment, but to get back in your body, be present yeah. and then curious later. Yeah. I loved that. Later, love, love that. that. Um, I love the idea that self-care looks like multiple things. Can you revisit that one last time? Cause I thought that was really cool. Your acronym and just yes. the ability sleep, exercise limits, which is boundaries, um, fun connection, aspirations, rest, and then eating well. I love it. So all of those are there and those that are watching or listening, we'll have that on the notes so you guys can copy and paste that. And I love that idea. And I like what they say is you rate each of those. Yeah. This is just kind of like a, a no, I do this practice, clients, right? Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. But you rate them and then the one that you think can move the needle, yeah. that's the one you focus on. Yes. Because it can feel really overwhelming if you've never really prioritize self-care. Like now yes. I got to sleep. Now I got to have an aspiration. <laughs> now I've got to find some rest time. Like start with the biggest thing that feels like, oh, that's really missing in my life. And it's, you were saying before, like, how do you, I mean, people ask me this all the time. How do you do all of these things and do it with a smile on your face or whatever? But it's because it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. Like I didn't get here overnight. I didn't have three children overnight. And the beautiful thing about growing in God is that there's always grace to do what's in front of you. That's and great. that always is growing your capacity and you feel that stretching. Like you feel the stretching and then months go by and you look back and you realize that there's give there and it's easy and you can keep growing. And so it's always a journey. It you is. All have, you have to start 
somewhere. You do. And when you look back, you go, wow, I really stretched like a yes. pregnancy. My yes. belly got really big. really big. That was amazing. And my face. And my yeah, my face. And everything my else. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, this has been awesome. Thank you, Chantel. Listen, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this conversation. I know not all of us are in, are in the season of littles, but I do know that even like myself, I have 14 tween boys in my house and I've got some good premenopausal hormones <laughs> pumping through my body. And so I do need to be reminded about these simple things and these really practical things. Uh, for many of you, you don't know where to start. And I would say, like, like Chantel said, just go through and you might rate them and realize, oh my gosh, sleep is at a two. And I always focus on my eating, but my eating's at a seven. I really need to go back to those other areas that are really depleted and start to work on that. Um, I hope that this has been a really good reminder. And one thing you'll find from both of us is it's okay to be human. It's okay for it to be chaotic. It's yeah. okay to say, uh, I'm going to do that tomorrow. Today, I always call it the reset button yes. and the set reset. And then also, I think real self-care is giving yourself grace to know the moment you're in because that's when we are least likely to treat ourselves with empathy and grace is if we are idealistic about what we expect from ourselves rather than humanizing ourselves and giving ourselves grace to learn and grow. I hope this has been helpful for you. Again, really practical um, steps, which I love. And is there anything else that, anywhere that you want people to find you? I Obviously you do. So yeah. um, coaching and such, is there, do yeah. you coach people online at all or is it mostly in person? No, all online. All I don't online. Think I have so how do they local. find you? I'm on Instagram almost every day. Um, <laughs> Chantel E. Nelson. And that's where you can find me. I have a membership community of women and I you'll find it. it all on Instagram. And we will link all of that in all of our show notes. Thank you for being here. And Thanks you guys, me. thank you for being here. I hope that you feel human, normalized, and empowered mm. to do what's in front of you. Uh, we may not do it perfectly, but we're going to do the best we can. And for those of you that are feeling shame, even by listening to this, you're like, I don't think I did this wrong. And my kids are 10, 11, 12, and I didn't get up and I <laughs> stop. Yeah. Now you know, and now from here forward, you get to be powerful. That's what a leader does. We don't go back and try to fix something we have no power over. A leader says, today, I start today, and a little bit every day builds into a really great behavioral pattern and as well as breakthrough. So I'm glad you're here. Next week, we're going to continue this series on faith and mental health. And thanks for being here. Bye-bye.